The bank was aware of the issue since 2021 and it resurfaced in November of that year. The level of responsibility of the Fed is being questioned, as it is unclear if supervisors were aware but failed to act promptly or if the board in D.C. did not take warnings seriously. The impact of monetary policy on the banking sector is also being scrutinized. Answers are needed to these questions. In February of 23, the Fed was informed of severe issues at the bank. It is unclear what actions were taken by the Fed. Eric Rosengren, former president of the Boston Fed, stated that the supervisory process is not built for speed. During a hearing, the Fed vice chair for supervision revealed that a bank lost $42 billion in deposits on Thursday and predicted that $100 billion more could be lost on Friday. This means that 85% of the bank's deposits could potentially move quickly. The discussion raised questions about the understanding of how money moves in the banking system. The top 10 depositors at the bank have $13.3 billion, creating a concentration risk and potential for quick deposit movement. This alters previous assumptions about money in banks and deposit run risk. The vice chair of supervision role was unfilled for almost a year during the time of issues shown in an interview. The change in leadership within the Fed is mentioned, but no one has been confirmed yet. The speaker finds it interesting to consider if this played a role. Randy Quarles served as vice chair of supervision until September 2021. Although he remained on the board for a few more months, he was no longer in that role. Michael Barr was nominated by President Biden as a second nominee for the job, but confirmation did not occur until July 2022. During this time, activity related to MRAs and MRIAs was flagged, and it remains to be seen if this had an impact.